Let's start this channel off with an easy one. This is the original Prusa i3 MK2. If you've been around 3D printing at all, you've probably heard the name Prusa or the term i3. This is the original genuine Prusa from the man himself, Joseph Joe Prusa and Prusa Research in the Czech Republic. This being an open source design, you see a lot of clones out there that wear the Prusa or i3 badge. The original Prusa MK2 or Mark II is a Cartesian style printer with a 250 by 210 by 200 millimeter build volume. Outside of it being a very well built and designed 3D printer, it's all the automation that Prusa builds in that makes it stand out. The printer is available in a fully assembled version or a kit. This one was built from the kit. The online manual is very straightforward and easy to use. There's even some videos for the trickier parts. This is the MK2S, which started shipping in March of 2017. The S is really a maintenance upgrade that includes a few things. This includes upgraded LMU88 bearings and Y smooth rods, extruder wire management, a new Prinda probe mount, electronics case, and U-bolts that replace the zip ties that attach the Y carriage to the smooth rods. There are also slight adjustments to the printed parts to give you a little more strength. The printer still features a genuine E3D hot end and Rambo board to run the whole thing. This greatly adds to its reliability. The Mark II will print pretty much any filament you can throw at it, even flexible. With a nozzle change, you can more than likely print even the most exotic filaments. The version I received did come with a molded plastic spool holder instead of a 3D printed one. I really didn't think much of this idea because of the whole 3D printer self-replicating thing, but I do understand in manufacturing, sometimes choices have to be made no matter what the cost is. My printer also came with a very interesting texture on the printed parts, almost like sandpaper. Looks like Prusa has been experimenting with some build surfaces, so be on the lookout for that one. Prusa has also taken over the development of Slick 3R. Yes, Slick 3R versus Slicer. The Prusa edition is available on their site and includes profiles for many different types of filament, so there's no tuning necessary even with the kit. Once the printer is set up, you can start slicing right away. The software adds a lot of value to this printer kit. If you live in the US, it will cost around $75 to have this printer shipped. There's also currently a seven week lead time for this printer. The kit version runs right at $700 US and the fully built version being $900 US. Even with the weight and the shipping, you'd be hard pressed to find a printer in this price range with this kind of consistency and all these features. There are a few things to be aware of with this printer. Noise. This printer is a little noisier than other printers. It's mostly resonating from the Y carriage on long back and forth motions. You can print things like these feet or these flexible feet to stick underneath it, but I've found just a couple of square gaskets of cork under each foot does the trick. The new rigid U-bolts on the MK2S probably add to the noise as well, transferring more than the zip ties would have. If it's really bothering you, there is a silent mode you can try that uses less power. For me, this really isn't an issue. I've also noticed the X carriage idler is collecting some belt shavings. If you move the extruder all the way to the right, you can feel the belt bind a bit. The X carriage is off a little bit, by about one millimeter, which is causing the belt wear. I have seen this mentioned on the Prusa forums, and I'm sure they're working on it as we speak. Now let's talk about a few things I have found that might help you with your build. The U-bolts on the MK2S version are not the easiest things to get just right. In the manual, they recommend tightening them until they touch the X carriage and then giving them a quarter turn. I feel this is just a bit too loose. If you tighten them too much, they will bind and they won't move across the smooth rods. I've found that if you tighten the U-bolts until they touch the X carriage, then continue to tighten them very slowly until you can no longer move the LMU88 bearing with your fingers. That's just about perfect. The auto XYZ calibration can be tricky to get to read perpendicular. Make sure you follow the manual and adjust the X width of the frame by moving the gantry to both ends, making sure the holes line up. Make sure the Y length is adjusted to fit the smooth rod snugly. You don't want any space in between the rods and the feet. Also make sure the distance between the gantry and the back feet are right at 100 millimeters. This proves to be very important. Next up, make sure your pendant probe is close enough to the bed for it to register properly. I've found it needs to be a little closer than the thickness of a zip tie. Lastly, the PEI sheet on the bed takes some getting used to. You might find you need a 0.35 offset for PLA, then a 0.85 offset to get ABS to stick. The good thing is you have live Z adjust and you can take care of this on the fly. If you're used to messing around with the printer firmware, you'll be out of luck with the Mark II. 
The good news is you don't need to. If you need to adjust E steps, just use M92 commands in your slicer G code. The results don't lie. This is a model from the SD card shipped with the Mark II. It's almost flawless. I have not been in contact with Prusa Research on this review or this printer. This printer was bought through the Prusa website with my own funds. Any opinion expressed is solely my own. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, please leave me a comment below with your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching.